some early morning for me Dota 2 action going on for all of the rest of you I think watching probably normal time but once again this is Starlighter we've got Hellraisers versus Golden Boys I'm Llama down on it joined by PQMZ how you doing I'm pretty good how early is it for you it's 5 a.m. I had to be up at 4:30. it's okay I'm excited to see these teams play but just to fill in a few people, because I know Radiant some of you may be wondering, I don't believe Havost is playing with Hellraisers right now. They've got Yajitsu and uh, It's Live O standing in for them. Dying and then, of course, Golden Boys had the roster shuffle recently where Madara has been replaced Radiant by Thug, team. since Madara, I believe, is now playing on No Logic Gaming. But other than that, I think everything looking just the way it's meant to. We got picks and bands flying out. Doxy, your first pick. Seems pretty legit. Yeah, he's a pretty strong hero that a lot of teams favor at the moment. I'm not sure if HR Runner super a lot of Wisp. I think Sashlo's played it, but Ten seconds I haven't remain. seen it in a while. So maybe GB know a Five bit more than I do remain. about the team they're playing. I'd hope they do, actually. Yeah, apparently Shocklow's been playing a lot of weird hero. Wait, that is not. There we go. I was not on this patch. I was like, Shocklo, your hero pool looks really suspicious. And then that's because I've been looking at uh, more than just the last patch. In which case, yeah, he has been playing quite a bit of offlane and one of the few teams that's kind of still picking up the Night Stalker. We'll see if that action ends up happening. But definitely HR Wisp players. Ooh, that's always fun. But Golden Boys as well. I've caught a number of their games. This game's kind of weird because coming into it, I do believe that these teams kind of thought to be evenly matched, but they both had quite a bit of roster issues, and Golden Boys without Madara still seem to be trying to find their form. They took a game off OG yesterday, though, I heard, right? They took a game off of OG, and recently they'd taken a game off of Liquid as well, I believe. Uh, just I'd they... say they're both much better teams, so that's good results for them. Except they lost 2-0... Technically, because there was a default win. Um, there, there was a default win, so technically it was 2-1, but they actually ended up losing 2-0 to four Clovers, uh, which is considered a much... which has a win rate this patch that is uh, lower than most teams. So, kind of weird. Aren't, uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, you cut out for a second the... there. Your mic might need to come a little closer. You were saying oh, about God. Ogres? I, I don't think the a bad team at all right now, so Golden Boys probably roughly about where they should be. I think the team's been together for quite a while as well. Like, it's a solid core of four people, I think. Not sure who maybe next time is, actually. Yep. So. Hey -ho. Either way, we've got Wyvern picked up. Always a nice thing to have. Slaughter or Lich? I'm a little bit more used to seeing the Slaughter paired with the Dazzle, but Lich Five will work too. Remain. Of course, the downside being if you manage to pick the wyvern into the slaughter, your slaughter doesn't have any damage that affects, affects people in Cold Embrace. I don't think it... he's the damage dealer though, so it's not too bad. And one of the reasons I can see Lich possibly being better than Dazzle Radiant as a second pick back. here is because it's not giving away the support you're dealing with for the darks here. So they have an option if they want to pick a more kill orientated support or if they want to pick a solo hero to deal with the ducks here and then have a spot to roam around. It gives them a bit more options, I feel like. Yeah. And I'm really happy to see Ember Spirit actually being banned out. I feel like some. It's really interesting. Ember Spirit, really highly prized. We've been costing a lot of America's Dota. It is banned or picked sometimes even first round in the America scene, and it does feel like there are definitely teams in Europe that are like, Ember Spirit? Who is that guy? We'll just both remaining. equally ignore him. So, nice to see him picked up. And the Doxia ban, I'm not Doxia, the Disruptor ban, I'm really liking this. I feel like he's a really strong support right now, and obviously it is a pain to be an offlane Doxia against that, so. The yeah, it's also a pain to be an offlane Doxia against a Gyrocopter. So, yeah, the I would have made it even worse. Yeah. So, Golden Boy's going for that standard carry. It'll be. I think Kaiser, that's another switch that they had on Golden Boy's, which I'm not sure if they're doing it every game or just the ones we've costed. Kaiser's been playing more mid, and. No. Wait a second. Kaiser's been playing carry, and Thug has been playing mid. 
which is another change for them because Madara used to be the hard carry. And I don't know how much that's affecting their performance as well, although as you said, they took a game off of OG. But this is really nice because Gyrocopter doesn't like to deal with physical damage. I mean, not magical either. He's pretty squishy. So having the damage, uh, the armor buff for him, really nice here. Yeah, and it also just means he's not completely right-click, uh, sorry, magic orientated in the early game once the Slada amping up his right-clicks a bit. Yeah, Gyro's a really More weird... More synergies. Mm -hmm. a really weird carry in that he is almost all magic damage, probably even till the 30 minute mark, just because it takes him quite a while to get up physical damage, and yeah, flat cannon can be really strong as the game progresses, but for quite a while, he's, uh, what do we say, Radiant kind of a wimpy right-clicker. So. It, he scales with farm, not skills, so it makes sense. But I can't believe Shadowfin's actually third pick. It's like highly prized in Europe, I think, so I'm surprised it didn't get picked or banned. Yeah. Now, yeah, the Shadowfin, it's really nice, I think, for a couple of reasons. Obviously, there's going to be Lich armor flying out, and oh, I can show, oh, they still have it in the game. Patches or no patches, there is still the weird sun. Um, but, of course, Shadow Fiend is a nice way of at least somewhat counteracting the Lich armor, although Presence of the Dark Lord doesn't scale as high as Ice armor, but it's also something where Lich will have his Ice armor up potentially later, just because of how Shadow Fiend flash farms. Here, though, for Hellraisers, I imagine the Wyvern will pop mid, maybe do some stacks. They need another strong lane support, just because Wyvern might be roaming, and whatever hard carry they pick for Hellraisers might need more backup. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, because when you run Shadow Fiend on the Dire side, he would like some help from his supports for the stacks, because it's further away from the lane and you'd rather not be doing it yourself. Considering they should feel like Lich and Slider is going to be an aggressive dual lane here, they're not going to have the supports to deal with that unless they pick, as you say, a really strong laning support and a stronger carry. So it's, I actually find it really weird that Golden Boy's opted for Gyro over the Shadow Fiend, because they do pretty much the same thing, but it's... A bit more synergistic with their lineup, I feel like, and it's also Radiant Shadow Fiend. Yeah, and it could just be something where they had been planning for the Windrunner all along. I know some teams just preferring her right now. Um, I believe people love to spam OP Ginger Hero, but I think she's great synergy, of course, with the Slaughter, with the amp damage, making Focus Fire a lot better at early levels. But then Shackle, we've seen it. The Shackles that land, maybe that get angles that you don't think should latch, but just the amount of lockdown Shackle provides. And I think it makes her a bit easier to survive against things like a Spirit Breaker. The hero's definitely really strong right now. I'm not sure it's like strictly OP, like yeah, I wouldn't say uh, she's Rainbow OP. Pony was last patch. Mm. But... It, if she manages to get shut down early, she can be, like, hampered a lot. Her farming's not the best. It's still doable, though, so... She should have a favorable matchup, though, against the Shadow Fiend, firing a lot of interference from the Spirit Breaker. Yeah. So, 100% agree there. Now, we've got a Razor banner. I like to see this. I'm not a huge fan of watching Razor. This does really make Hellraiser's carry game hard, I think. Razor was a nice pick there, just very flexible, and... Had some good synergy with the rest of what Hellraisers was going for. Could yeah, it's also really good against Gyro. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting here is often the Darkseer Spirit Breaker, I mean, Spirit Breaker's going to be roaming. Maybe he'll be stacking a bit for the Shadow Fiend, but you often put Darkseer Spirit Breaker in the same lane because of the synergy between Bash and Surge, being that Surge gives Bash more damage. Hellraisers, it feels, needs a really independent carry here. They could go for something... Radiant Maybe like pick. clinks or not the best option because of the amp damage, but mm. it's still something. Quops obviously banned out, so that's not an option. Razor was decent, but as you said, he also got banned. So I'm curious what they'll go for here. So as you say, I don't think they're going to try to contest for lane too much. I feel like they should put more priority on the Shadow Fiend with the Wyvern. So yeah, and instead Golden Boy's going for an Earthshaker, so this Shadow Fiend's going to have a scary life. They also, on Hellraisers, pick quite a bit of... I mean, they obviously run the Tiny Io combo, hence why the Io is banned out. But they do sometimes run AM or Alk, and Alk isn't banned out. It'd make the Shadow Fiend's positioning weird. I guess you can put Shadow Fiend safe lane. 
I don't think either of those are a particularly good option. Maybe if they feel desperate, but I feel like Golden remaining. Boys have a really strong lineup against both those heroes. So I hope they don't go for either of them. Yeah. There's too much like snowball potential, and there's not enough space on the map for Hellraisers to have a secondary farming hero. Like those two, at least. Yeah, and they've got 18 seconds. They'll reveal to us shortly exactly what they are going for. But in the meantime, got any bets? No, I just I feel like it's really weird. You need a really independent carry, and it Five seconds, runs out a lot of the obvious options. Additionally, Hellraiser is not a yeah. Okay, so they do run a bit of beast most. I didn't want to say it because I feel like he generally goes mid. I well, kind of feel like they drafted themselves into a bit of a hole. How so? It does feel like they have trouble. Yes, you're going to have some decent team fight, but what's your damage in the team fight? I guess raises, early game, and some of the Shadow Fiends right click? It, to answer your question, that team fight's mostly just going to be Shadow Fiend and Iron Shells for a long part of the game. And maybe the Wyvern if he gets good levels. The reason I think they drafted themselves into a hole is when you pick Shadow Fiend on the dire side, you do want some kind of help because his mid lanes are generally not that advantageous. That's going to draw the wyvern away from top lane. Then you've got a beastmaster, presumably, who's going to be dealing with a Slardar lich lane, which remaining. is not favorable for him either. So the supports are already under a lot of pressure. Picking the spirit breaker means he can at least do something towards the windrunner or the gyro, but he's not like that strong laning support. I, I guess he could be if they wanted to opt for like a tri lane top, but then it's just messy. Yeah, and it's... the late game's also just not better, so I feel like they have to do a lot in the early game and the mid game, which they definitely can. But I feel like it's just execution based, where GP have a bit more of a room for our liner. Definitely, and Golden Boys just have a lot more fallback. If something does go wrong in mid lane, they always will have the gyro farming. If the gyro is having a hard time, Windrunner's probably not having the worst of times. Either way, let's get into it, introducing the players. We've got Athaninja on that Shadow Fiend, Sharklow on the Darkseer, It's Live O on the Beastmaster, Yajitsu on Spirit Breaker, and finally Goddamn on the Wyvern. Golden Boys, we've got Maybe Next Time, the Drafter on the Earthshaker, Fog on the Windrunner, S224J That's on the Shank Lich. Skanks, that's Skanks. Okay, Skanks on the Lich, Skylark on the Slada, and Kaiser on the Gyrocopter. Yeah. And another thing that I'll be interested to see in the two games I've caught, Thug generally had an okay performance in mid, but he didn't seem to be maybe quite as ready for it, but obviously they did beat OG yesterday. I unfortunately didn't catch that one, was costing some stuff, so we'll see exactly how his mid lane ends up going. Um, you have mentioned that you think HL's lineup is a bit harder to execute. Do you think their laning phase is also more difficult, or... I mean, this Darkseer Spirit Breaker lane is pretty hell. Yeah, it's... got the ability to put a lot of pressure onto the gyro, but it looks like the ward that the Earthshaker put out... They, they see the five-man rotation, so they might even opt to dodge. But the more favorable lane for the gyro, where he has to deal with the Beastmaster and possibly the Wyvern instead, which could actually be really smart from them. Yeah. They've already got Skylock down in the bottom lane, uh, spots out their rotations, telling his team just to be careful. So it looks like we'll have the usual rune split, one for top, one for bottom. And uh, this mid-match matchup, it's pretty even. Um, we've actually got Beast Monster as well. Headed up top. This is another thing I was going to say. It's not fantastic, but Beast Monster, I mean, you generally want the boar in lane to harass, but you could potentially send it to the jungle to stack for Shadow Fiend. Yeah, if you want to do that kind of next level stuff, how, it's the, if he summons it right now, he could stack this camp at the minute mark. That would be legit, actually. It's something I've seen before, where beast monsters, instead of using their boar to harass in lane, either just deciding that their lane is a bit awful, they will kind of just constantly use the boar for stacking, and it can certainly help you as the beast monster farm uh, catch back up because of how axes work. But with Athaninja on a shadow fiend, should help him out too. And here comes the Arctic Burn that we've all gotten so used to, popping, forcing Windrunner to pop that Windrun, and goddamn just doing some good harass. So, pretty standard stuff. Now, down bottom, we've got Sharklow actually doing a lot of damage to Skylark. Level 1 Ion Shell, apparently doing He's work. He's gonna have a fun time in this lane. Not really gonna be under pressure for quite a while. 
I want to point out the Spirit Breaker is literally jungling. Just to stay off the map and be as efficient as he can while doing that. It's not something you see too often. And I'm not too sure how it's going to work out, but if it does, I'll be impressed. Yeah, I'd never seen the Spirit Breaker jungle. He's already down to just one tango, but it's not strange. To, I mean, I think having one salve, having a bit of mono regen, probably your first or second charge is going to end up with you super low. So uh seems like a decent engagement. And we've got a sh uh, stun onto mid, just harassing Appa Ninja a bit. This Earthshaker, um, we've discussed before... Going top. Oh, we've got Gyrocopter taking a lot of damage. Kaiser's gonna be a first blood. He just goes down, and now Skanks looking like he may be in trouble too, but you did so. He is level two, not getting the bashes that he wants. So, this top lane, strange tri lane, doing work. Yeah, that's actually so fortunate he gets the Satyr spawn, but it, maybe he just looked in the jungle, saw what he had, and then he decided to work with it. Generally, don't expect a level two Spirit Breaker at that point when there's not been any pulls going on. Yeah, he's been getting some lucky jungling. They're gonna actually go for the stun. They... who got the rune there? Looks like Earthshaker managed to take the bounty, so he's pretty happy, although Doxia gets a regen. Always nice for that hero. And in mid, already working out for HL, so they're pulling a little bit ahead. Do you think the gyrocopter just needs to rotate? Uh, um, I think with the Lich having the lane this far back, he'll be fine. I think it's mostly just the fact they didn't expect that to happen. So I don't think it'll happen too much. It'll be alright to keep him up there for a while at least. Maybe rotate him away after he gets level 6 or the Bada starts feeling too much pressure from oh. the leveled iron shell. They might be bringing some more hurt. They've got the slow, but I don't think a charge is going to come out. Nijitsu is standing really close by. Um, I think, yeah, the creeps actually see him, so... Not going to be able to do the sneakiest of things, but certainly a nice start out from HR. Now, some itemization in this game. I wonder, Beast Monster, used to seeing him just rush Necrobook. Is there any reason he might want to blink earlier this game? Maybe to uh, lock down Windrunner and actually Kaiser taking a lot of damage again, but a really nice Fissure, unfortunately, on the wrong side. Can they catch its Libo? Not quite so much. I think if that Fissure were on the correct side, they would have a kill. Goes for the Echo Slam without having... not Echo Slam. The Enchant Totem without having a point in Aftershock, so... That was weird. Yeah. Or right click damage. Yeah. Premium Echo Slam, scary, yeah? He did not... But, Radiant's bottom yeah. tower is under attack. I think... Uh, sorry, I completely forgot your point. Oh yeah, the Necro Book. I think it's better because... Just go blink. You made the point earlier where you lack damage in fights, and if you go blink, you're definitely le it's all on the shadow fiend. So if you go for the necro book, it it gives you like a more solid tower pushing, it gives you better team fight because you have the spirit breaker to initiate in the early stages of the game, and dark to some extent. If you surge into roar, it's generally good enough, for, especially at night time. So I'd like to see the necro book first. Yeah, HR, I mean, I don't think it's a problem just because of how this game will progress, but their early Radiant game team fight's going to be a lot of magical damage coming out from Darkseer, coming out of Shadowfiend, and I wonder how that's going to affect them. Shocklow creep cutting again, and he is having a ball. He is top of the Sea Earth net chart, and there's nothing Skylock can do here, I feel. Golden Boy's lane's surprisingly weak. Getting good CS, though. He's only a few behind. I'm kind of surprised though, he's managed to sustain in this lane really well. He opted to just go for like a lot of regen at the start, hasn't picked up a bottle or anything, so... Oh, we've got a Fissure on top, the boar is tanking a little bit of it. Can they get the damage? They've also got the slow. It's live, they need about two more auto attacks. He eats the mango and the rocket barrage, but they didn't continue going forwards. And he uses the flat cannon, but it is not enough. Just letting It's live get away on 20 health. Not value on the mango. Radiant's Disappointing. <laughs> and unfortunately, they'd rotated a bunch down bottom for Skylock as well, but finding nothing for HR. So both sides having their ganks foiled. And that'll be no, that. Actually, still going. oh gosh, Skylock, he's been found out by a bash. He manages to get off a big slithering crush, but Shocklaw is still coming. The uh, Splinter Balls doesn't hit, but Shocklaw, he's gonna dive this tower. And now maybe next time's in trouble as well. Where are the TP rotations? Maybe next time's just gonna go down, and Skylock should follow. They don't manage to get off a secondary charge, but they'll see him in a second. Slithering so crushes. It's nighttime. Here comes SF. Gonna just fill himself up, or can Skylock get the deny? He misses the raise, and Skylock goes down to neutrals. Well played. Uh, it just, you have to guess at that point. Mm -hmm. So, nice heads up play from him, opting for the neutrals. 
wouldn't have worked if it was any other camp than Wolves, I think. So kind of fortunate as well. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness for that damage output on the Alpha Wolves. But the early rotations from HR, are, I was surprised to see the Wyvern go too, but they're definitely doing a good amount of work. Yeah, it was a really heads up play because when he saw them there, he TP'd to the secondary tower, but unfortunately this ward gave vision of him coasting around on the side. So they were able to get the charge off. Yeah. It's and nice to see the early aggression coming out from HR. Wipen being able to do this is like much nicer than just sitting in a lane being a defensive support. Makes uh -huh. you feel a lot better about your hero for sure. Yeah. We've also got a potential gank coming in to the mid lane. Windrunner has to be careful, there's a lot of magical damage, although she's probably just gonna- yeah, she might- She actually just tanks the Splinter Blast. They've got Skylark coming in, but I don't know if this is gonna be enough. A power shot comes out, goddamn, is getting a little bit low. Do they know where Spirit Breaker is? Yujitsu just hiding. The Ion Shell's about to wear out, so I think nothing will happen here. And we've got more heroes, Earthshaker. I think they saw Yujitsu, they're hunting for him. He's gonna manage to charge away and- Oh, they catch him at the edge! But he's up on the high ground. He's stuck. And they know it. Do they have any way of eating through the trees? Who who has trees? They don't know exactly where he is, unfortunately. Oh. I think he's fine. Yeah, the power shot misses. He'll probably just charge away in a few seconds and there he goes. And that's a nice space creator, Athaninja. Very happy to get the lost hits in mid while that goes down. Yeah, GP ended up getting the ward that got placed behind the tower early with the sentry, so that's good heads up by them, realizing it could be there. I don't think it was actually given away, but just nice heads up support play. And now they're looking for the smoke into Afroninja. Yeah, we have five heroes in mid. Skylark trying to make something happen with that sprint. He's been spotted though, he's gonna go in, he's gonna go be able to get through the creeps with the changes to sprint. He'll get off the slithering crush, here comes a charge though, the cooldown is dropped. I think Yajitsu should probably fall and Kaiser's going for the SF kill, a strange rage and raise and the power shot getting the kill. Where? Oh, we've got a bunch of different things going on. Yajitsu, his charge is coming off cooldown in three seconds, but the physical damage with amp damage will be too much and he falls as well. So it's live, the TP rotation not doing it, and Golden Boys have tied up the score and got themselves a nice bit of gold, killing that top farmer off. I like this play from the Spirit Breaker going for the Sacrificial Lamb play, but just not quite enough to be coming out. Yeah, I agree. It was pretty nice. Something else I just realized is Windrunner also pretty dang weak against a uh, cold embraced target because of fo how focused fire works. I guess she has power shot, which of course she's maxing, but don't know if it will be enough. And this charge, I think, will just be for harass. Spirit Break is not a high enough level to get more than that done. And here, yeah, here comes the wind run. She's gonna actually maybe be able to turn it around. Is the shackle coming out? It latches! God damn, it's dead! And he goes down there. Really well played from uh, both Skylark for a pop it in, but mainly from Thug. Quick thinking there. I like that they try to force the TPs, but they're obviously just not on the same page, so there's no way you get that kill. You recognize that, I recognize that, goddamn, unfortunately didn't. Or maybe you just got greedy and went for one more hit on the harass. Yeah, I think it was the one more hit. I think that they knew they weren't getting it, because of course they're two pretty weak heroes. It, Splinter Blast does a lot early game, but it doesn't do that much and against the Windrunner, so I think that they just thought they could get one more hit off, maybe not expecting the Shackle to latch. Arguably a bit of bad positioning by Goddamn, and Goddamn's a really great player. I've seen some fantastic things from him, but everybody makes mistakes. So. Uh, that's the joy of Dota. You can be one of the best players in the world, and you can make one or two silly mistakes and everyone will criticize you. Yeah. Oh, Kaiser putting himself in a bad spot. We got a Primal Roar coming out on him. A Fissure, but he's in the middle of a wall. He gets the cooldown. Can his team do any sort of follow-up? Here comes Lich, also not having level 6, and now maybe next time. I think he has to try to bait them in or something. Level 6, very close for Lich, but I don't think they're getting this. They will have another stun and uh, enchant totem, but oh, the axes might end up just killing off maybe next time. Goodbye, he says. Now Skylark is here as well, but Skanks, he's gonna fall. Slithering Crush at least nets them one return kill, and here comes Thug. Shackle going to pop up that surge. Shackle not going to latch. It's at least going to burn some of the surge time. But Skylog just keeping up with him. Another Slytherin crush. And I think this is the end of the offlane. Are these power shots? I mean, yeah, they're easy to land on a Slytherin crushed unit. But still, really nice job coming out of Thug. Space is made for the Shadow Fiend, though. He's at least putting pressure on this tower. Should be able to at least take it with this DD rune. Denied yes. or not. Oh, Earthshaker gets the deny. Well played there. Always what we like to see. Denying a tower out from under a DD Shadow Fiend, that's pretty cheeky. 
Yeah, he's two for two this game. He got the one bottom as well. So he's the bane of HR's tower pushing life right now. Yeah. They want revenge. Cal's <laughs> coming in. Poor Earthshaker. He's gonna maybe next time. I'm not gonna have the fissure or the stun connect, and he should be okay. But down bottom, they're getting ready to do it again. They have the primal roar up and Skylock this time. He's gonna be primal roared, but can he just slither away? The sprint was active already. He's taking amped up damage, and here comes the charge. He needs team backup, and here they come. They might just be able to get this with the spirit breaker. He is only level five though, so gonna cancel that charge. I think if you have nether strike, you just go for it. Radiance middle tower yeah, is um, under attack. They're, they're actually fairly under leveled on her races, so Beastmaster's only just hit level 8. So the Spirit Break is not quite 6 yet. Goddamn at least has it, so maybe they can do something with the curse instead. The Never Strike. Yeah, we've also got Earthshaker only being level 4, but this will happen. He's roaming. He maybe arguably doesn't need it as much, especially with how powerful Fissure is. Fissure's a fantastic spell early game, and... He's doing work with or without the Echo Slam that I accidentally keep calling the Enchant Totem. Just slightly sleepy Dota things, but big pickup, Skylock has his Blink. And that's what I meant by, I think if you have the Nether Strike on the Spirit Breaker, you just go for a kill on the Slaughter every time because you're delaying his Blink. But unfortunately, it's up, and suddenly the game getting a bit harder for Hellraisers. I like his decision to straight rush Blink this game. Opting away from getting Trancors or Bottle or any kind of small items. Yeah, I also think that while it might be a little bit hard, it's always hard to get good blink initiation against a beast monster. You have to go it. There's just so many chances where it benefits you. And Thug, actually, he's going to be engaged upon. He manages to get the Shackle, but here comes Goddamn. Does have the Winter's Curse, and I wouldn't be surprised. There it goes. And they might even use the Primal Roar. Where's the backup, Thug? Can he just wind run away? He's got TP support, but taking physical axes damage. Here comes the cooldown, but Thug is dead. And they might be able to get a bunch of return kills, though. That ult from Lich, bouncing everywhere. Goddamn, taking a bunch of damage. Razors are going to come out, and Kaiser, he's going to be pulled back through the wall. But the Slithering Crush saving his life, and I think he gets out. Maybe next time being pinged. He is most certainly dead, did not have gold to pick up a TP, but still, a good turnaround kill. A little bit in favor, I would argue, for HR, just because they managed to get the Windrunner and she's topping the net worth chart, but certainly salvaging that situation really well. It looks like they're going to be able to transition into a tower as well. Skylark trying to delay it, but I think they've got the presence of mind to just take the crush and try to hit the tower. Yeah, and they don't want to go for it. I think they just want the creep wave so they don't have to worry about the tower aggro. But that's going to give time for GB to resurrect and come back with full mana and HP. This charge, I don't know if it's going to connect. It looks like your Jitsu's going for it and Skylark's suddenly in a bad position. It's raise time. We've got the Nether Strike up and that is a dead Skylark just overstaying his welcome. And you said Golden Boy's respawning, but at the same time, they are not in a position to fight. No blink up on Earthshaker, of course, so they're just going to have to deal with the fact that they lost a tower there and... Also a good man in the, uh... Good fish. Ooh. A good fish, yeah. I really like this smoke up play. I think, yeah, they're... Was it seen? About it, I think. Yeah, was it yeah. seen? I feel like it was I just out of... power shot saw it. Mm. If, if he was looking at his, his, the end of his power shot, they would have seen the smoke animation. Oh, but, but maybe like... next time's just gonna end up tanking the gank. He manages to get the fissure on one, but here comes the primal roar. And again, HR, they're not exactly going in one by one, but Golden Boys is finding them one by one and just really punishing them for these, uh... For, I guess, not playing as five at 15 minutes into the game. Can't really blame them. Can they get the Roshan off the back of this? They've got one point in presence of the Dark Lord. They're going for it. Yeah, they've got the illusions to tank as well, so that helps a lot. Yeah. In this moment, we'll take a few seconds to look at all the items that have been flying out for the lineup of HR. We've got Goddamn, rocking those Tranquils, and a Soul Ring. Pretty damn good for a Wyvern. Spirit Breaker's got up his own, so of course his damage output is a little bit better and helping him with the Roshan. Sanj first on Shadow Fiend. We've been seeing this a lot more, where heroes recognizing they need to tank up. And this smoke coming out. Skylark, he gets the three-man Slithering Crush, a power shot as well. The cooldown might just take out your Jitsu. He's going to go down, but they managed to get off the wall. Where is the vacuum? Thug is pounding into Affin and doing the Lich Hold. Is it going to bounce back to its life? No, it goes to the creep. Its life takes it again, and he manages to get out. But on the back lines, it looks like they've lost Beast Monster. Shackle trying to kill off Kaiser, but will he, in fact, go down first? The Shackle saving his life. Goddamn's going for any sort of thing. The Splinter Blast does manage to kill off the Slaughter. And now, goddamn, he will fall, but at least he got a return kill. Is it going to be a full five-man team wipe? Thug. I think, has this easily body blocking up goddamn, and that'll be the end of that. And how low was the Roshan? 
I don't know. It's about a third, I think. Yeah. There's no way they take this. Oh gosh, Thug, why are you walking through the wall? Life choices. He wants to check, I think. Yeah. He's also oh, going to have to walk through oh. the rune as well. I think he just doesn't walk through it again. We can hear Spirit Breaker coming out for Thug, and he's dead! The, the Nether Strike gonna end up killing him, and the Lost Auto attacks, and Skanks may have gone down as well. So, this wall doing work. He gets the Haste Rune, one of the few that'll save bash. his life. Oh Why my goodness, it? he gets the Bash, but there's gonna be a Fissure to stop him out. But they're coming again. They aren't able to stun him again. Can they do anything? Bash is coming. Echo Slam expended on Yujitsu, and the cooldown's gonna get themselves a kill. Well played there from Golden Boys, but of course, they did end up losing Windrunner. This game suddenly picking up. We're at almost two kills a minute. If they managed to take Roche with the time he bought there, it would have been like perfect play. But it's 16 minutes in. You're not going to take a one third HP Roche in like five seconds of space. Yeah. It's like just overstaying his welcome a bit. And HR had uh -oh. built themselves up a nice lead off the back of some of those team fights. They everything is trending back down towards very even, and in fact, an experienced lead in Golden Boys. Although we expect that with the Lich. I, like the play they made top where they did the two by two exchange, then they ended up getting the slider and the tower, and then they smoked and got a pick. That was like perfect sequence of plays for them. Yeah. It's exactly the tempo they needed for this game to go well. But when they went into Roche, they obviously weren't confident that GB wouldn't contest them. But that's where the game kind of. Like, they can't do that again. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. We've got another smoke up from Golden Boys. Just checking around the map, there is a mech finished on Doxy. Yeah, this is their last smoke on Golden Boys for five minutes. They wanted to make sure that the Roshan wasn't being done again. Unfortunately, they also can't do it themselves without a pickoff, and it's really hard to Rosh against a Beast Monster, who, by the way, has Necro Book 1 up. And now they're going for a smoke, it looks like, on HR. Goodness this gracious. This could work out really well if GB split right now. And it looks like they will. They might go and investigate their opponent's jungle, not expecting the Roshan attempt right after they checked it. Radiance Although Afa Ninja on HR oh, leading the charge. It looks like they actually want to go check the jungle. So um, both teams, I think, Smoke's going to be off the mark. If they were really next level, I think they would have known kind of what GB were looking to do, realizing they smoked, and if they just went into Roshan and took it, that would be much better than what they're doing now. But it's a much riskier play. Oh, they know. The lineup of HR pinging out the ancient stack, and they might be able to do some good work here, but they're all backing out, so never mind. I thought it's always a nice play to see someone go for killing whoever's doing the ancient stack, because you generally get a little bit low this early in the game to ancients. Instead, they're just going to go back to Roshan, I think. Unfortunately, because of how long this has taken, I think Golden Boys is going to be onto this. If you can trade Roche for an ancient stack, you're really happy mm -hmm. with that for HR, but this is scattered out because it's like exceptional vision around the pit, so they're going to have to deal with the excellent team fight of GB now. Yep, and now we've got the Sanj. The Aegis does manage to go down in time. They've got a stun coming out, and they managed to destroy Spirit Breaker, but of course you've still got an Aegis up on the Shadow Fiend and all the other benefits. Now, a few other items. I think with that we should be seeing... Oh, we have an engagement continuing. The High Ground Wyvern isn't latched on and is going to just wander away. Dogs here, I think, should have gotten... Actually, he's still saving up gold. I thought he was going to go straight for a Blink Dagger. Just kind of maybe as the Beast Master follow-up initiation. I I'd expect a Blink, but maybe he's going to opt for Force tower. Staff or attack. some item instead to... Okay, no, never mind. Just wanted to go back to base instead. I like the Blink, as you say. Counter initiation plus another form of initiation. How they need to hate this game. Oh, crap. Are we lagging? On That's stream. fine on my end. Uh. Okay, I just saw some lag. I can actually change servers. I know we had some Why issue yesterday. Problems. So, always fun. Oh, anyway, you're sorting that. Hopefully... HR looking to get some aggression up in the jungle, but no luck as they get scattered up with the ward from GP. Also trying to deward knowing that something might be there, but just looking in the wrong spots, unfortunately. Yeah, and it looks like we might be hitting a spot of lag. I'm not dropping anything on my end, but I'm just going to do a quick restart, folks, um, on OBS. So I don't think there'll be any downtime, but just give Radiant's me a second. And yeah, we're going to maybe miss an engagement, but... Uh... Why can't technology be simple? Okay, apparently we're not lagging. 
Okay. Never mind. We've got an engagement. We've got a Winter's Curse coming out. We've got a Pri uh, no Primal Roar. I actually, it was expended. Skylock gonna die to the Axes. There is a cooldown coming. It's gonna hit on a few. It should just deter the rest of the engagement. And we've got mass TPs leaving from the lineup of Golden Boys. That's a really smart idea to just get out, not sacrifice anything more. Yeah. Kind of rare in our game. Yeah. So, hopefully I have fixed our lag problem. Sorry about the little bit of distraction for the calls there. Just trying to make sure it's not lagging on Twitch too much. And I've tried, I'm trying a different server, folks. So hopefully that'll fix everything. Now, looking around, the gold lead firmly back in HL's control. But it's certainly within one team fight apart. And we've got Blink Dagger up on Slaughter, working on his full stuff. Windrunner has also finished off her Aghanim Scepter. So her damage output is suddenly way, way up. And I think Lich going for a medallion. Always a nice pickup. Yeah, it's probably just to tank up the front lines, but at the moment, HR they need to be ahead for this game to work. Oh, Thug the going. having another strike and a primal roll. Thug is not going to have a moment to go down. They're going to get off a really beautiful oh, Lich Blast, and with the slow as well, I think both of these two might just end up dead. Cold Embrace or no, that is an Aegis Burn, and Windrunner has bought back. Can she get in here? There's going to be a Shackle coming out. Nothing happening. Jay can do there, and with Focus Fire coming in, a Vacuum Wall of Dreams, but with the uh, Blast, with the Requiem of Souls not being as nearly as much as they needed, it's not going to work out. There is the Winter's Curse. Kaiser will probably probably fall here, but I think it is worth it to burn the Aegis and burn the SF in return, although it's kind of even because there was a window and a buyback, yeah, and we can see by the gold exchange, it's pretty even. So a really nice play there, and Skylark, he's desperately searching for more, Yujitsu's going to TP out, and I doubt they'll manage to catch up the hasted Winter Wyvern, so a nice play there, all of them escaping. I think buyback's worth it in the end, because... I don't think they've had the confidence to take the fight without the Windrunner being there to do the damage she did. But it's just like, she, she loses a lot of gold to doing that. I think she was at like 1800 before. If you count the death on top of paying for the buyback, she lost about a thousand. So her item progression is going to be stunted slightly, but it's worth to keep up the tower, I think. The Necrobook Free is going to be coming out really soon. Yeah. Must be just 300 away. That's like their peak. When HR have like one more small item on the SF, depending what he wants to go for. Bachelor has the Guardian Greaves plus Blink. They're good to go with the Solar Crest as well. This Wyvern's really fun. Yeah, this Wyvern, I'm a little bit surprised opting for the Solar Crest and now popping up a gem instead of the blink but it's certainly doing good work and it feels like with Sharklow with Beastmaster there uh, sorry with Sharklow with the blink on the dark seer with Beastmaster already getting many great primal rolls off you maybe don't need the blink initiation at this point I think the the blinks great in theory but it's not what they need to win the game as you say they've got the other ways of initiating and you just need to make your SF as physically big as possible. If you could get a Vlad's, if you can get Solar Crest, which she opted for, it mitigates a lot of what GB can do, especially the Wind Runner at this point of the game. And it's only level 2 amp on Slider now, so not all of it's counteracted, but every little bit helps. Yeah, Unfortunately, also... it's just the situation where Shadow Fiends won't call this game, they have to play around it. At least they're itemizing towards it. Okay, now we have no picture and just sound. Sorry, I'm still having some technical issues, which is always right, I will keep talking. Excellent, thank you, PQ. Let me just check that it isn't just something where we needed to refresh and we'll get the image back, and if that's the case... Five months smoke into GP's Ancients, get scattered out. They initiate oh, with the into two. And there's going to be a Winter's Curse coming out, maybe next time, looking to fall. This is going to be a good, you know, the cooldown, just killing off illusions. And they get a clean pick. I don't think they can follow it up onto Lich. Yeah, but this is the rest of the big creeps and probably the mid tower as well. Yeah. Maybe um, not, actually. They feel possibly a bit unsure with the back uh, being on cooldown right now, the wall as well. Maybe they want to just wait for their ultimates. Maybe not. I think it's a play though. They ha they have to be able to go for things like this. They wait on their ultimates. It's just going to buy too much time for GP. The Necro book is up, so that's probably one of the bigger things. Yeah. Okay. It looks like I have got it. 
Radiance bottom tower. Fixed. Okay, Gucci. I've got it fixed, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and hopefully that'll be all the tech issues for today. So, hopefully we'll be done now. Um, Cast and Dota. Yeah, and attack. hopefully that is all we need to worry about. And as you said, we've got some item pickups. Gyrocopter finishing Sanjin Yasha, working on the BKB now. Ooh, Slithering Crush onto that bird with great prejudice. No love there. Um, it looks like Lich is going to be their mech carrier. I think that's really optimistic, just picking it up so late. I'd rather have had your suggestion of the medallion over... I, I mean, the buckle is cheaper, so maybe you wouldn't even have the medallion at this point. But I'd rather see him working towards that. You can counteract a solar crest as well. Putting it on the Shadow Fiend can really mess him up. If you ever get to that sort of farm, at least. Yeah. But it's. You have to expect you're going to get items at one point in the game, right? <laughs> you got to hope for it, certainly. Um, something else I wanted to mention is that this Earthshaker, he's getting a really late blink here. He seemed to be on a good pace at one point in the game, and then he's just been picked off, it feels, one too many times. He's really hard when HR is just running at you. They have the vision from the bird. His positioning has to be pretty good to not die in these fights. So, it's awkward, and... As you say, when you've got the Lich, who's also pretty poor, he's probably buying most awards as well, but there's just not much room. When the Gyro is farming, the Slados may be farming a lane. Windra is definitely farming as well, trying to catch up from her buyback. Yeah. It's, it's rough that she bought back. She's not... She's fourth now in the net worth. At one point, she was topping the chart. It seems like she's doing decently, but of course she wants a crit here. She wants a, any sort of damage item. She desperately needs that, and it's really... It's really something where if she doesn't get ahead, as you've mentioned, she, she wants to be ahead of the Shadow Fiend a bit, and it's really hard to be there. So, on the other hand, they have two backup supports, so at some point, HL's lineup... <laughs> yeah, it... Nice tips coming out. Yeah. Always good, folks. You can be all protected, too. You, too, can be protected from the D. The words that cannot be spoken. Yeah. So, anyway... Honestly, uh, it's so shit that this happens. The players, it's just so frustrating to deal with. Yeah, and I'm, like, super confused that it's happening this game. Because it's not exactly, um... Although... I don't yeah. know if you're join Dota Lounge, right? Sorry, not join Dota. Dota 2 Lounge. Yeah, yeah, so that, gonna that's it. There's going to be bets on it. So, I didn't want to say anything, but yeah, because there are bets. But anyway, maybe he's also just having connection issues. Uh, so. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, I, it happens all the time. So, Earthshaker, he's going to get closer and closer to that Blink Dagger, but he really needs to die for not like 10 minutes for this to actually latch. He's 1, 7, and 8. The 8 sounds good, the 7 not so much. You want to swap the 7 with the 1, and then you'll be happy. <laughs> then you'll have a Blink. And you'd have a blink years ago, so feeling a little bit unfortunate here for maybe next time. But he's used to this. Maybe next time always has a really rough row. <laughs> and Golden Boys with some other stuff that we won't talk about going on now. Um, if you're wondering Windrunner here, do you try for a blink still, or are you in favor of just going straight crit? I think with the idea that your Earthshake is going to get a blink in the next five six minutes if the fights go well and slide already having one you look for a bit of damage or maybe a bkb self i think crit's not the best choice but it's the one they generally tend to go with that's probably his trail of thought right now i could see bkb though because hr just have a lot of shit right now that makes it hard for him to do what he wants he can circumvent the Requiem, just the Iron Shell damage in general, the constant Splinter Blast spam coming out yeah. from the Wyvern. It makes his life easier. It's also something where the Winter's Curse, it can still be cast on the BKB unit, but it means you don't attack your allies, and since you're starting to stack up, always good. Yeah, and if you're wind running, your allies don't hit you, so perfect synergy, right? Yeah. Yeah, um... <laughs> Uh, Actually, I'd be surprised though if he does go BKB. I think I could see Maelstrom as well because there's 
this is really next level, I guess, but if you went into the Mjolnir, there's so many instances of damage from HR with like the Iron Shell and just stuff like that in general. The Boar's hitting you, Necrobook hitting you. If you put it on the Jaro and he BKBs and runs at you, yeah. you could do so much. Or but the I don't Illusions? Think never gonna do that. Yeah, that as well. You can kill the wall really easily up to your farming speed. But unfortunately, it's like a waste of 5k gold other than that. Yeah, it's really rough to justify it here, and it certainly doesn't help you. You don't get you don't get tankier other than the damage instances. It's certainly something where a well coordinated HR team can move their attacks off of you depending on the instance. And of course, as you mentioned, they might just raise you down anyway. So, really rough there for Shadow Fiend. I wouldn't be surprised if his next item. He actually went the Blink Dagger, something we haven't seen as much this patch. I wouldn't be surprised if his next item is the BKB. Uh, I, I like the choice of items he went for this game. The S and Y really standard stuff. Opting to let the Dark Sith pick up the mech so he can go into more of the carry role earlier, which makes a lot of sense. Following it up with the Blink so he can do more of the Wombo Combo stuff with his team. Even if it's just a solo pickup with like Wyvern Ulti into Blink Requiem, it gives him more presence. Yeah. And I think he doesn't need the BKB super early right now. Cause he got the S and Y pretty early, he had the Aegis as well, so that probably prompted the Blink a tiny bit more. So BKB next is a very logical choice. And I think the Beastmaster will pick up his Blink Dagger as well next, and we'll just be like, hey guys, we be blinking. at the moment, though. It, he's oh, yeah, having yeah. a sad game. I mean... 26 minutes, Necrobook free and a magic wand? Like, uh, yeah. Considering how his lane had a bunch of kills kind of early on, they definitely managed to kill off, I think... I think it was Lich and uh, Gyrocopter took a tumble in that top lane each. Um, I thought he was going to have a much better time and unfortunately hasn't been able to seal the deal on farm or kills, but he's been very active. He's got um, 13 kill involvement on his team, which only has 17 kills, and I'm impressed. Yeah. Um, part of the reason for that is, as you say, he's the one moving around because he has to be the one moving around. It's actually it's like pushing lanes in constantly, taking some of the Radiant Woods if he feels confident, but then Afro Ninja is taking one lane plus his entire woods. So there's very little space for the Beastmaster to get his own items up. He's mostly getting it through fights and kills. Yeah, and... Which, while we're having quite a lot at this point, mostly dying, I feel like. Can you come look at this effigy? I don't even know what hero this is. Like, it oh, looks... Abaddon. Why does it have a tree in it? Do you see the tree? Not a tree, it's antlers. Yo, okay. <laughs> I'll believe you. I mean... No idea. Yeah. No, I don't it, see it's it. It's completely messed up. There's like a sword hanging out. Yeah, it it looked like it looked Tiny's like... tree to me, and then a pouncing Marana dog, a uh, sorry cat, and I was really confused. But um, Spirit Breaker also has up a Glimmer Cape. This is something where the supports, while the Lich is uh, a hero who can go without any items. Glimmer Capes early. Not only are they fantastic items for the magic damage reduction, it really hurts your opponent's economy because you have to pick up sentries or dusts otherwise people get away and as a weak support that always sucks through that item honestly ever since it got implemented supports life just got so much harder yeah and, but it, it's really good as well because it fits into the theme of buffing up your shadow fiend which they're only frontliner he's getting nuked down by constant harass it's completely kills their sustain and their push. So Glimmer Cape helps out with that. And it also gives them a form of initiation. Definitely. I'm just like, how does... Did Beastmaster just... I've forgotten what happened before this pause now. I, like, Beastmaster has the Guardian Greaves debuff on him, but clearly Darkseer Shocklo is on the bottom lane, so I'm just like, what happened? What's going on? So I think he just TP'd down there and it's having a bit of a surge about. Um, to try and help out Earthshaker here, would you just try to calm down the game until he gets his blink? Because I really think, Golden Boys, you hit a new wind when the Earthshaker has blink. A lot of these pushes, HR has to position themselves better. As you said, they're going to have to have SF kind of frontlining. The rest of the heroes waiting to come in after because otherwise Earthshaker is going to pick them all off. And it potentially makes these team fights a bit favorable for Golden Boys. I think they definitely would like to slow the pace down. It's just a case of how much HR lets them. When 
you're playing the shaker, you're the one that always wants to be there to stall the push, maybe cancel some TPs, or you want to be there ready to disengage your team if they get caught, or engage if the enemy team's in a bad position. It's generally the cause that TP in or are taking the farm elsewhere, so I feel like it's mostly just going to be on him getting a fight where he doesn't die and maybe gets one or two kills, or is just in the area for the um, kill gold. Yeah. That's the way he gets it. And just so folks know, each team does get 10 minutes of pause time, I believe, per game. So, the... Also per instance? Like, if it's one player, it's pause no, time no, no. for them? No, it's, it's 10 minutes per team. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, when he said goddamn, I definitely read that as like, goddamn, that this is happening. <laughs> And then remembered it's the player's name. <laughs> I was like, wow, Leo, wow. <laughs> um... uh, Alright, they're gonna man up and Mike. Okay, right, I I'm gonna tell you a personal story here. I was playing a match where my player spilled Coke on his keyboard, and I had to play Beastmaster and Dazzle from minute one to about minute 30, and it was so hard. If they can manage to pull this off, it would be insane. I mean, goddamn. Literally, I had to micro my hero. I had to micro the ball with all these mm -hmm. weird, stupid hotkeys. I kept pressing F1 to pr click on the Beastmaster hero and it didn't work. Oh, yeah, that'll. That'll be. Oh, goddamn is now reconnecting. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just reconnecting, though. Yeah. No, goddamn's like, okay, team, Spirit Breaker, you're microing me. I am now microing. Um, but unfortunately, it does look like we're gonna have to go into this down a few players. Um. I, I think a lot of these players experience with micro, but as you said, a beast monster is just a whole nother level. And especially something where we potentially have, I don't know whether goddamn will be doing it or the spirit breaker, it's probably going to be one of those supports microing the core just because the other cores maybe have a rough time. But as a winter wyvern holding the gem who has to get off that perfect winter's curse, I would not expect him to be the one microing because it's so rough there. And as you said, there's boar, there's necro creeps, there's the hawk, there's just dude yeah, like, beast monster but... things. I, I think the boars are gonna pretty much get neglected. The hawks, everyone can do because it's like, okay, your shadow fiend's farming one point, he just moves the hawk to wherever he feels he wants vision. So the team can kind of take the hawk. The necro book is, again, annoying because none of them will have it hotkeyed initially, so they'll have to drop it. Maybe, like, control group it up mid team mm -hmm. fight while also thinking about controlling the hero. It just adds a whole new point of Dota. Yeah. No, if, if you want to play hard mode Dota, this is how you do it. I'm sure some of these players, though, have played other types of MOBAs or uh, RTSs, so I'm sure they will be able to figure it out. God damn, it's doable, just... but, like, you have to be at such a lead for it to work, I think. Yeah. Or your opponents have to be really bad, which was how my game ended up working. But I don't think it's the case here. Suddenly, super rough. We've also got another... Uh, we've got a smoke up on the Earthshaker. No smokes up on HR, and both teams waiting for the smokes to get back in stock, although HR's is going to be first. What is he drawing? Okay, I think he was trying to draw oh, something. Oh, yourself. No, I'm pretty sure he was you know trying what? to draw something, and then he realized that he's like, oh, I can't do it. I don't have the owl macro. The owl macro is so good. I always enjoy that. We're also really light on the effigies, like... Yeah, effigies are so effigy. bad now, though, because reborns just screwed them up entirely. It's a yeah. shame, really. My throat but... hurts. Okay. Nice that they're opting to play, though, as opposed to just forfeiting the game. Maybe it gives them some time to get back in as well. Also, to look for a stand -in yeah, for a organize a stand-in for a second game. Um, I don't Dyer's think, I hope we don't have the series forfeit. Attack. Just because I was really excited to see these two teams play, feeling like they're very even given their current records, but unfortunately we may not, and I am not sure at all who's microing. So another problem with the Beast Monster here is, I believe you can't, he still owns gold, and you can't buy items on the disconnected player, and right now in Reborn we have no yeah. remake That's function. A... Yeah, not being able to buy a Blink Dagger on him is going to be a problem. 100%, it is not nice to be in this bit of a pickle, so... Uh, uh, Alright, so... You can't even pull him a blink, right? The wife and can't get fat and no, pull him a no, blink. That's that a huge work. problem. So they... Honestly, I think they're gonna have to win in the next 5 to 10 minutes on the next Roche. If this is gonna work for them. 
They have this... to make one or two big team fights, take a few towers, get the Roche, and end the game. They have There's a lot. There's no way this is going to work. Yeah. They have a lot of push potential just because Inner Beast is such a fantastic passive. passive. And yeah, I think they're going for maybe an all in play here on a pickoff. We can hear Wyvern getting ready, but they're all backing out on Golden Boys and they're completely in the know. We yeah, actually. It's also really impressive no one died after the pause because mm -hmm. that was like 10, 12 minutes of just. People will forget what's happening, unless you're really disciplined in the pause, which most players I've played with aren't. It's like, alright, I'll be right back five minutes, I'll get a drink. You, you just completely lose track of what's happening. Yeah. And they're all going to end up backing out from the lineup of HR. They could easily take down bottom tower, I think, for HR. It's pretty low. Um, as you said, though, sieging high ground is another story, and they're at a lead, but not enough of a lead where you kind of throw your body against the tier 3 and win, necessarily. Um, a good Slytherin crush coming out, a good Lich Alt, and these Lich Alts this game have been on point, could just end it for you. Top tower. GB have really hard heroes to push into, and the Frost Armor is also one of those things you probably don't take into account too much, but as a player you really feel like your push just isn't going as fast because of it. Yeah. When you only have Shadow Fiend as your right clicker, it's even worse. I guess the boar and the necrobooks kind of help as well. It buffs him up, but you're still right. They're running basically a one damage output lineup. Like, they've got a little bit of sources from everything else, but their right click is all SF, and I don't know how viable that is. Now, we have potentially gonna... Oh, maybe next time actually doesn't realize he's completely seen, and he ends up stunning, goddamn. I don't know if that actually changes anything, but kind of lucky. And the sentry completely off the mark. So they get the tier 2 bottom that we thought would be super easy, and they can maybe turn their attentions to Roshan, who's just respawned. I like the fact that GP didn't opt to just go for the top tower because the tier 2 bottom died, which obviously it did. Their Roshan control gets a lot more limited. And that's the way HR win this game right now. They get a Roshan and they just take one really big team fight. Yep. So be golden... optimistic that it can go 40 minutes, I think, but realistic, I think this is the window. Yep. But. HR, they understand that maybe they're expected to be doing Roshan, and if they can do the return gank on the Roshan pit, unfortunately, because it's a smoke, they don't see anything, but maybe they'll pack. still be able to get it. They have to have some idea that this is going on, but the smoke still has quite a few seconds left on it, and maybe next time, since he's not placing any sort of wards, they're not seeing anything. Oh, really unfortunate there. Radiance I feel like HR could certainly... Do, do we also just have... To... Oh. Ooh. Now, this is pure outplay, honestly. They're seeing bottom lane push in, they knew exactly what the smoke was happening, now they're going to engage Roche, and GB have to make a really clutch decision of taking the fight, where the vision's probably not as good because they have Hawk and such, and there's a lane pushing in. And Sharklo is judging them for their ward placement. I don't know if you saw that, they had a ward in the river, they meant to put it in this sneaky spot that we've been seeing quite a bit. Instead though, here comes Slaughter, and he might be able to get the jump here, nobody's disabled his blink, there it goes, there's BKB! They managed to use the primal roar, but it's live, is stunned up both of these times, but he's DC'd, who cares? Slithering Crush lands onto one, and Afa Ninja taking a lot of damage, he's gonna Requiem of Souls, but that's a BKB unit, and Skylog, he's taking a crap ton of damage, the Lich Hole, it manages to bounce over once, but it's not enough, and Windrunner is dead, Skylog's gonna fall, I think, to earn, they get off a nice fissure, but somehow HR one man down are outplaying them in Spirit Breaker. The urn has managed to kill off Slaughter, but Yajitsu, he's going in for more. He has a charge coming up. Can he do it with the bashes? Can he get the bashes? There's gonna be a enchant totem, but now here comes Afa Ninja and he is there with the damage. Raise one, raise two, Echo Slam though, they've got another. He doesn't attack the right hero, I would argue, and maybe next time's gonna fall as well. A four man wipe for HR. They don't lose anybody in return, and this is gonna be a super easy Roshan for them. How did they take that engagement? I think it was mostly just that they used a lot of the spells on the Beastmaster after he dropped Book and Raw, and then they weren't able to deal with what HR were putting out. They got a really nice back into, I think it was a Freeman curse, followed up by Requiem. They got a lot of damage out, and they just weren't tanky enough. HR's still at the point where it's like, they have a lot of good teamfight at this point, and if you use your spells incorrectly, they can definitely capitalize on it. Yeah. Now that's like worst case scenario because you give them Roche, you also lose a fight, so you put them further ahead. As opposed to just giving them Roche and trying to like further your own net worth. 
Yeah, HR definitely making a case that despite the DC, they are still in this game, approaching a 12,000 net worth lead and almost a 5,000 experience lead. So they're doing pretty dang well now. As we've talked about, it doesn't feel like they easily have the late game, but they are putting themselves in a fantastic spot. So we'll see. Beast Monster being microed very slowly around the map. We have also Wyvern really close to her Blink Dagger when it comes to gold, and Spirit Breaker 2k as well. So maybe these supports can itemize to help out their Shadow Fiend. Do you think it's a game where something like a Lotus Orb could be coming out for the lineup of HR just to make sure that those Shackle Shots aren't on point? I don't think too many people are going to buy it. You could opt for the Wyvern, but I think, as you said, maybe I think Spirit option. Breaker is the only one who would potentially get the Lotus Orb. Yeah, I could, I could maybe see that, but I think it's better. He just gets a beat. Never mind. Dax uh, goes ahead and picks it up. So I think that thought it's, process. It's really good for the amp as well. Yeah, it's really good for the amp. I believe it will dispel some of the slows coming out of the lich. Um, it'll return the amp. It'll return the level one rocket. Oh yeah, and it'll make the lich think twice about who he throws that chain frost on. Of course, he can just throw it on a different target, but it can really help. It arguably tanks up the shadow fiend because people don't want to engage on him. Yeah, I, I'm surprised he didn't go for the Beavis instead as more of an initiation tool and just adds a tiny bit more damage, but the same thing I was saying earlier where they're just on the Shadow Fiend train, buff him up as much as possible. And I think actually the Windrunner opting for Blink Dagger over a damage item here. The Slaughter has been doing a good amount of lockdown. Yes, I think the Blink, Blink Dagger has helped her positioning, but not having the damage has missed them some kills. She couldn't take out the Shadow Fiend in that bottom engagement over here tower, just because they... Attack didn't have any damage on her, it felt like, so. Afeninja gonna get himself another tower easily, it looks like. Frost Armor not gonna slow him up, and suddenly HR, despite being a man down in a really fantastic place, they still have a really hard high ground siege ahead of them. I think you have to kind of put Necro Creeps on there, maybe have Afeninja play up in the front? Uh, I think they, they have to commit with this Aegis. The GB have really strong deep pushes. You see, cooldown just clears out the creep wave. But they have cold embrace at least, so they're gonna get a few hits in here. Yeah. And killing off the rocket, as you said, they're getting this tower down to half health. All of these buffs up on Shadowfiend making him hit super fast. We can see both of these attack speed auras. Yeah, they get the bottom tower, but Shadowfiend doesn't care. And as you said, you gotta use this Aegis. They've only got two more minutes on it. He may as well completely burn it. They go for the Slithering Crush. He's actually four stuff forwards. I think they're... Oh, they put the Lotus Orb on him, and so I think it's actually time to just go right back in. This should be returned when it hits, is it? No. Okay, apparently... Yeah, it's when it hits. Yeah, so the Lotus Orb expired there, folks, just for folks playing at home. Who were wondering maybe what happened. And they have gotten themselves a tier 3 tower, immediately dropping a ward. This sentry not going to be nearly close enough to see it. And they're working on the range tracks. Afeninja, Lotus Orbed up again. They have to do something, and Skylock deciding to go on the back lines. But Thug, he gets off the shackle. It manages to latch him with the Echo Slam. The Primal Roar coming out onto maybe next time. There has to be some sort of follow up, but they don't see a good wall vacuum combo. But there's the Winter's Curse. Afeninja going to drop a Requiem of Souls on top of their head, and suddenly Kaiser taking a crap ton of damage, and the Lich Hold has been returned, and it's going to kill off the Lich. They'll Thug taking a lot of damage for it. HR, he's going for some more raises, but I think they just got themselves a Rax. Well played there from HR, and they have put themselves firmly in the driver's seat. I don't think Golden Boys is out of it yet, but a fatal mistake there from the Lich popping the ult there. They've got Skylark bouncing in. Uh, uh, Earthshaker, he doesn't have Echo Slam, but he could certainly bounce in. The Cold Embrace saving its life from everything coming out of the Windrunner, but now not going to save his life. He manages to just walk away, and now the, finally the power shot gets him. Can they get the return kills that they need here for Golden Boys? Have and they're just going in, pounding into people. He finishes them off with a raise. The charge in is stopped, and will that finally be the end? But Thug, he's suddenly out of position. He's going to try to wind run it off, and I think they want to back out here for hell raises. Surely they want to stop this engagement, and there we finally see it end. That was a bit ridiculous. Yeah, the game winning Lotus Orb on the Lich Ulti, I think. I'm managing to prove your point. Really surprised it actually happened. It's really hard to cast it on the like big glowing target, I feel like. But I guess you can also do it mid-air, so if you see it coming, you can yeah. play it. So maybe it is super next level, actually. It's actually, as much as it's like Lich, why did you cast that ult on him? As you just said, Lotus Orb can be applied while a lot of these projectiles are flying, and even stuff like Winter's Coast, as a Wyvern who looks to be taking a lot of damage in the bottom lane, has Lotus Orb up, he but is... He doesn't even die to a Windrunner, like, Oof. he needs damage so badly, and he's going BKB. Solo Crest, doing work. Um, I was saying that even the... 
Lotus Orb, Lich Shalty. No, Lo yeah, even something like the Winter's Curse, Lotus Orb, you can see the animation being cast and apply it. And then it gets really hard sometimes to catch it. They manage to shackle Alpha Ninja, but where's the damage follow up coming out of Thug? There just isn't any. This blink is really biting him in the ass, and now he's also trying to follow it up with DKB because he feels like he needs to. Really awkward. I wanted to point out earlier when you mentioned it, like, they had damage in terms of the rest of their heroes, but where they really lack the damage is on the BKB Shadow Fiend. It's even worse now that he has like more support from the rest of his team picking up items. Top he needs to be the one to kill the Shadow Fiend in BKB and make him play defensive. If he's just allowed to walk at you, then obviously you're going to have to feel like you need defensive items. But it's that the gyro that's picking Dyer's up the MKB, so he's going to be taking that job. Yeah, so he's going to be the one, as you said, trying to actually hit people here. I don't know if it's too little, too late. I think they've still got a lot of game left in them. Oh, we have a Primal Roar coming out, and it looks like Beast Monster is going to go down, but can they do anything to save his life? Thug now being killed off by his ally with that MKB. They've got a cooldown happening, though. Affa Ninja, he just pops his BKB. Requiem of Souls is going to greatly reduce the damage output. A wall onto kind of no one. The gem needs to be picked up by Shark Lord, but he's thinking about returning back in. Affa Ninja has killed somebody else. This time, no Lotus Orb to save him, and he's going to go down. So so finally a good kill for them, and I think Shocklo got out with the gem, so at least that's something, but having no Lotus Orb up there to deter Skank's gonna really turn it around, and can they just go with two? I'm not sure if Yujitsu is doing the right thing going in with this charge, but we will see, and Skank's here, yeah, he's just dead. Nether Strike gonna finish him off. Thank you, Ion Shell, but Skylark pounding into Yujitsu, and he doesn't have a charge up. He's just gonna have to try to fight this, and Glimmer Cape here doesn't do work. Gets the fissure out as well, Yujitsu no, is going fine. for. You oh, think no. so? Okay. Oh, he didn't charge away. Is he actually going to get out? There is a full stop and a blink dagger up. And yes, yeah, Slytherin Crush going to seal the deal. Yeah, that Fisher nearly saved him. If he'd have managed to quickly charge like Pop or something instead of just going straight into the side, I think he might have gotten away there. But really hopeful play going into the base trying to kill off the Lich. Yeah. I mean, I, I think killing the Lich wasn't necessarily the problem. It was getting out. I think if he had been... A little bit lucky, I could have probably Glimmer caped out, but of course amp damage got applied, so... He did his... a TP for that play, for sure. Um, our experience... Now he has his BKB. Yeah, that is one big spirit breaker. So, we've got experience turning towards zero, we've got net worth over 10,000 lead for the lineup of HR. I still think this game is losable for HR, but they need a bunch more items on both the Windrunner and the Gyrocopter, it feels like. I'm actually really surprised that they've managed to extend their window so far, and I think it's mostly on the back of the Winter Wyvern. He's been playing really well, he's had good farm, high game, so he's not just been hitting good spells, but Solar Crest is obviously super impactful, having the blink meters positioning is even better, now picking up the Vlad's just buffing his team up a lot. Mm -hmm. And really trying to make the most of playing around this single core lineup, or this one, sorry, one carry lineup, because they have other cores. Shadow Fiend, though the Slytherin Crush misses, and now I don't think Skylark or oh, Golden Boys can continue with this gank. Oh, that was so fortunate. He was around here, I don't know if you saw it, and the smoke was literally just about to break, but he blinks away. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he knew that they were there, and he was just like blinking towards his team maybe, or he wanted to go farm Ancients, get a rune. It was just so unfortunate. That was like exactly what GP want, finding a solo Shadow Fiend. Yeah, and as you said, not working out for them. Is this also a smoke Dyer's rotation? It top. is. It's if they can top. get this team fight from behind, Dyer's they could certainly top. make it a win, and they're just going to go from the side. Thug has no idea. Winter's Curse, Affin Injury, Requiem of Souls right on top. Thug is going down, and now Kaiser has to fight alone. There is an Ice uh, Frost Blast coming out. Kaiser is doing quite a bit of damage, but it might not be enough, and he's going to fall here with no BKB. How is he going to escape? They've got people going on him. They do even drop the wall for him, and one more auto attack should be the end of him. Suddenly, HR in a good spot to take another Rax here. I don't know whether they'll be able to catch out Skylark. He's trying to sprint away. The Earthshaker has also laid down a fissure, and I think Skylark should be able to escape here, but a big team fight for HR. That Winter's Curse Requiem of Souls, a beautiful blade coming out there for HR. And their creep wave bottom pushing as well. They're managing to get it every fight uncontested. Yeah. Exactly how they're winning, and there's no buyback from the Windrunner. They'll probably figure this out really soon. Yeah, they'll they're know by the push. 
Gyro, I think, has to use his a big Echo Slam. They're going to manage to pick off its life, but no, the Guardian Greaves come out. They're trying to auto-attack him down. There's going to be a cooldown. That'll catch someone at least. Goddamn, immediately popping the heal. Appa Ninja is going down, though, and they don't manage to get Kaiser in return. At least they forced the buyback. They got over half health onto the tower, but if they pick off some of the rest of these stragglers, maybe finally Golden Boys can turn it into an objective. They're going in. The Fissure just misses as Sharklow blinks away, and now the charge coming into Skylark. They try to use the Splinter Blast by Goddamn. It's not going to be enough. There's a heal coming out of Skanks, and now with the dust up onto the Glimmer Cape target. Nether Strike is going to hit on Skylark, but where is his team's follow-up? BKB popped by Yajitsu, and I think that Skylark, he may go down here, but they can't see him. And Yajitsu running around, Glimmer Caped up. Oh, not Glimmer Caped up. Lotus Orbed up. Doesn't help you against the Focus Fire, although we maybe were going to see that returned, but unfortunately, no such thing. If they manage to get out here, the rest of HR, it looks like, goddamn, though, sacrificing his life. He can't swim his course again. It's not enough to kill, though, and he's going to lose a gem here. This is pretty unfortunate for goddamn... Gonna oh, hold. It, yeah, I think he is. Yeah. Shocklow's coming in, maybe thinking about trying to pick that up, do something. He's just gonna TP out, actually stops his TP. Slithering crush on him, is he gonna feed as well? Suddenly everything going oh, wrong for no. HR, and he's dead! That's just... over... extension. Like, I think they saw the game in their grasp when they picked off the gyro mid, they also got the windrunner. They go for the tower push, thinking they maybe don't have buybacks, get four man echoed on a creep wave or something. I think it was at least three. And then it was just like, oh, it's cringeworthy, unfortunately. Yeah, and However, also, it's not over for them. They can still do the exact same thing again. They just need to play a tiny bit more discipline. Yeah, and I think um, maybe relying that Lol's team fight engagement was fantastic for them, and they have smokes coming up, but they might be losing a Roshan here. Earthshaker is now holding the gem, has a four staff up as well. We're gonna be seeing if there can be any sort of contest. Beast Monster should have a good idea of this, and they dust actually, making sure no one was glimmer caping in. Beast Monster should be able to escape here. They actually might get. Oh, they got the amp damage. Beast Monster is most likely dead. That was a cheese, cheese version as well, which is always worrying. They've actually popped the Necro Creeps, and it's life. He's gonna take a call. Oh, goodness. Call down happens. He doesn't manage to get off the Primal Roar, and now the Wyvern, goddamn, does manage to blink away. They have to take this fight four, four on five. If at all. If you're HR, do you just dodge until the Aegis is down? I don't feel like you have the time. I think they could definitely lose a tier 2. The high ground defense is so good, but unfortunately, Sashla is I don't know what... trying to push up bottom. I don't know what he did there. You know that they were in that area. They just took Roshan and he TP'd down bottom. Maybe hoping just to, as you said, push up bottom, make a little bit of space, force them to rotate home on the Radiant for mid lane. Well, if he got the Iron Shell off on the group wave and, like, surged down or away and TP'd, it would have been a really good play. But it's that fine line where it's either a really good play or it's just a feed. Afro Ninja doing the right thing, though, trying to do some split push. Unfortunately, he has no TP, so this is extremely all-in. Yep. Lich is holding up Kaiser's Talisman of Evasion. Of course, his next item was going to be that butterfly. And Windrunner is rocking 4.5k gold, now a little bit less, and she still has buyback. So our buyback status is not... I mean, most people have it on timer. Unfortunately, Shadowfiend actually doesn't have his by gold. I'm really surprised by that. I he just went out for Satanic. I, I really don't think buyback's the way for him. They want to be pushing out. If that. If he's buying out, I think he's are losing the game in the long run. Did they just That's dominate the Hawk? They did just dominate the Hawk. What a play. It's super tanky as well, actually. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, now you've got... That's so legit. You got, like, OP scouting Hawk, 1400 health. Yeah, Literally that's an unkillable 8, ward right there with Memphis. That, that's so legit. Yeah, I like it. I like the play a lot. Um, I haven't seen that one before yet, folks, so always... I mean, who's going to actually micro it anyway? <laughs> that too, so... Uh, Butterfly finished out from Gyrocopter. He also, of course, doesn't have buyback based on time, so not a big deal there that he buys out. He'll probably be able to farm up buyback by the next time it comes around, and... Windrunner rocking the cheese. Gyro, of course, rocking that Aegis. What did he... Oh, he swapped out the Helm of the Dominator for the Aegis, so... That'll be something. Windrunner needs to spend her money as well. They're pushing with 5k in her bank, even yeah. with Aegis Cheese. It's, it she doesn't! 
She could just get a chrysalis and like it would all be worth it. We've got a slithering crush coming out. Manages to catch out. God damn. He's getting stunned up again by the bash. They've managed to get the Lotus Orb, but he's going to go down before getting off the Wyvern ult. And that is huge, this team fight. We've also got It's Live falling. Windrunner pounding into Afa Ninja now. And Afa Ninja, he is caught out in no man's land. Manages to blink up, but Skylark getting the slithering crush on him. Is this just the beginning of the end? The shackle could land. Afa Ninja trying to dodge it. There is a wall dropped. No vacuum. And here comes a charge. Thug popping the cheese. Afa Ninja wants to Requiem of Souls, but he doesn't have the beat. KP, and they're going deep into the base. That's going to be a Lich Holt coming out on your Jitsu as well, and suddenly down two heroes. This might be a Rax now for the lineup of HR. Lich Ulti is bouncing around as well, getting all the creeps. Kaiser's a little bit low, but of course he is Aegis Carrier, so why are they going for the... Oh, the creep wave means that they have to go for the tier 2 instead. And I don't That's know... It's really fortunate. Yeah. It's time for HR to get their stuff back up. Oh, but they see exactly where Afa Ninja is. Maybe next time is maybe going to just blink up on top of him and Echo Slam if he sees him. He could certainly blink forwards here and give it a go. And Skylark cutting off the easy retreat. Sharklow, can they latch him onto the tree? They don't need to. Oh, they get the latch as well. And Sharklow is dead. How does HR defend with just two? I think they can still hold high ground. That's the dumb thing because it's taking so long. And managed to pick up accumulation on the Windrunner, but their sieging is not the fastest right now. Hey, don't get me wrong, it's decent. Jaro hits for about 300, Windrun is hitting for just over 200 at the same time. But it's not the quickest, so I think they have time for people. Yeah, Afaninjo, quick on the fingers there, trying to make sure he doesn't go down. And yeah, they'll get this tower. She's got a decent amount of damage. She really needs that crit up. But certainly going to take this, and they're looking to even up the odds in mid. But Wyvern never used her ult. So, goddamn. got picked off really early. So yeah. That's like ideal for GB. Mm-hmm. Probably the most influential hero that you can feasibly pick off. Definitely agree there. We've got Darkseer working on his Shivas. Shadow Fiend, I don't know what you buy out. You get bots, you get rid of the Blink Dagger, or is it Sanjin Yasha you just trade out for something? I think the Blink's been really good this game because how they've been coordinating the alts. But now the BKBs are up on like the Windrunner as well. They have been for a while, but maybe now you just have to sell the Blink and get a crit or... A rapier, maybe. Oh, and it's actually MKB from Windrunner. I was really expecting crit. MKB makes, makes sense. sense with the yeah. Butterfly. Butterfly, uh, Solar Crest as well. They have no idea that Earthshaker is chillaxing invisibly because they had lost their gem earlier and haven't picked up a new one since. And maybe next time, gonna scout out all this. He also broke a smoke, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they're gonna Necrobook and find him now. Oh, uh, they should have. Oh, yeah, they felt they saw that, and now he blinks away. Echo Slam does come off, but there's going to be the Primal Roar. There's also a charge coming up, maybe next time, but Skylark, he's here with a Slithering Crush. Sharklow taking a lot of damage, but Kaiser, Winter Coast up. They don't seem to have the damage, though. He's so tanky, but there's another strike, and Ava Ninja locked down in the Cold Embrace with the amp damage on him. He's not invisible for them. We've got a buyback on the Earthshaker. Can he get back in here in time? And Ava Ninja, he's being isolated out. This might just be GG. He doesn't have buyback. Kaiser is so low, but no cigar, and Yajitsu, he manages to dodge that or uh, that he's still dead oh can he charge away to oh he's running through the wall oh goodness oh glimmer caped up can he do, can he dive he's tping they're gonna just slithery and crush him this is really unfortunate legit attempt, honestly. yeah it was really beautiful but as you said it feels like the one bad team engagement that hr took here may have cost them the game there's also the dc of course but they were looking like they were in a spot to win it 4v5 for Dyer's quite a while there is under attack I actually think the Wyvern managed to kill the Shadow Fiend there. It's really unfortunate Dyer's because when he's CC'd, mm -hmm. you obviously want to Cold Embrace him, but I think the Shackle was ending. By the time he like got his Satanic off, the stuns were off cooldown again, and he just got locked down. So It's really hard in the moment, though. I've yeah. done it several times, and I'm sure my team hates me for it, but, you know... Yeah, it's, it happens. Sometimes you don't cold embrace in the best spot. Now, do you think here that you call GG or keep trying to fight it out as HR? You've lost the gold lead. You've lost the experience lead. I think you might as well try one more fight. It's about 20 seconds on the Shadow Fiend, so I don't think they'll be able to triple rex you if HR delay a tiny bit here. They just need to buy a tiny bit of time, and then the Shadow Fiend will be up for the third rex. And, and then is it GG push down win. mid? Yeah, you try for sure. I don't think you just GG out here. You might as well. It's like an extra minute of your time. Okay. Well, let's see if they can set something up on Kaiser or Thug. There is 
the glyph coming out, and we've got Necro Creeps popped up. Goddamn could go for a blink in here, and Kaiser wouldn't have an easy way out. Pops that BKB. Oh, and he's using Flat Cannon. It's live. It's just going to go down. Can't get off the Primal Roar. Even if he died there, getting off the Primal Roar there, I think worth it. But here comes Kaiser. There's a BKB and a vacuum into a Requiem of Souls. Unfortunately, Winter's Curse is going to reduce a lot of this damage. Echo Slam comes out. Yujitsu doing good work. This wall, it's nice, and they call GG, understanding that it is over. Really unfortunate to see here for HR. Hopefully they manage to find a stand-in for the next game, but either way, we'll be going, I think, to a game two. Do you have any fi- oh. That, they got robbed, honestly. They, they should have won that game. So, it, unfortunately- it was, Yeah? Yeah. It's painful. Yeah. And it looks like we won't be having another game in this set, um, which is unfortunate to say the least, uh, which means that we will just be live for a few yeah we won't have another game until i believe another hour and a half is when the next set between i want to say liquid and cis reject starts up but for now it looks like golden boys take it 2-0 one of those being a default win and uh hr not able to play i want to give credit to them though because it's not easy to do that and it's not like they just used the raw on that hero they still microed it really well and barring that one Overextension, they played it pretty cleanly. Maybe GB kind of tilted a bit because you know when you're playing 4v5, it kind of messes with your head. The game plan's a tiny bit off. And they could definitely have played a bit tighter in the stages where they were losing. But I gotta give credit to HR. I agree. HR played a great game. They were in a really rough spot. Unfortunately, we won't be seeing another game out of them between them and Golden Boys. And we will be just going to some words from the sponsors before we head to the splash screen for a while while we wait for the next set to come in. Um, sorry, folks, that we don't have another game, but it's really, yeah, that happens sometimes. So once again, I'm Llama Down Under. I'm joined by PQMZ. We've been casting Star Ladder. Um, Thank you all for watching. I'd love your feedback on how to get better. We had some technical issues.